There we go. There we go. What's up guys, this is Tony with Salt Strong and I'm gonna be talking about topwater versus paddle tails. I was out filming an insider report recently for our insider members and if you don't know what those are, we basically go out every week and we film on the water reports showing exactly where we went, why we went there, the tactics we're using to get on the fish, trends, patterns, that way our members can go out and replicate those patterns and tactics to start catching more fish. So if you're interested in that, head over to saltstrong.com forward slash pricing to see if you're a fit for the Insider Club. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about topwater versus paddle tails. I was out throwing topwater first thing in the morning and I was fishing these schools of bait fish and the bait fish schools were very large. There were bait you know, scattered all over the place and topwater just wasn't cutting it. Typically, first thing in the morning, top water is my go-to, especially in the summertime and the fall and the spring when those uh, temperatures are comfortable for the fish. But what's going to happen is if you're fishing schools of bait and they're pushed up on the surface, they're already making a lot of commotion and it could be hard for those fish to dial in on your top water. So what I did was I switched over to a larger paddle tail and was basically using that lure below the schools of bait. And if you're fishing below the schools of bait fish or just outside of the schools of bait fish, you're going to draw more attention to your lure. It's going to be easier for those fish to dial in on your lure because the fish are usually going to be picking off the bait fish that are, you know, the weak uh, bait fish or the injured bait fish that are either down below or off to the sides away from the main school of bait. So that's when it can be really good to switch over to a paddle tail. Get your lure down underneath the schools of bait or off to the sides of the schools of bait. That way those fish can dial in on your lure. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to some on the water footage where you'll see a couple trout that were caught using a paddle tail when top water just wasn't cutting it. So let's go ahead and switch over to that on the water footage. Got a lot of bait out here in this windblown cove. Wind is blowing right into this cove. Bunch of bait out here. Bunch of bait getting hit, as I can see up on the surface. Not sure what's chasing it, but throwing the moonwalker right now. Let's see if we can get a strike. All right, top water doesn't seem to be cutting it right now. There's a lot of floating grass. And every time I bring my lure in, there's grass all over it, and that can deter a strike. So I'm going to switch over to a larger paddle tail. I have the mulligan on right now. I think I might switch over to a bomber, which is a five inch paddle tail. It's a little larger profile with all this bait out here. And hopefully grab their attention there's definitely fish out here busting on the bait but there's so much bait it could be hard for the fish to find your lure so i've got our bomber in the alabama leprechaun color five inch paddle tail throw some juice on there dr juice give this a shot this was a very first cast with the bomber I was casting the top water probably made about 20 casts without getting any blow-ups or strikes very first cast with the bomber I was able to hook into this really nice trout there we go there we go first cast really nice trout Real nice trout. There you go, just a simple change of lure. Big tail on this bomber. Thumps in the water and gets these fish's attention. Nice fish. And that was first cast after switching to this five inch bomber in the Alabama leprechaun color. The retrieve I was doing was just a 
slow steady retrieve keeping it close to the bottom and popping in every now and then so here is the last trout that i caught on this trip again using the five inch alabama leprechaun bomber uh, paddle tail and the key was to cast around the busy bait fish and what i mean by busy is that the bait fish that were up close to the surface they were a little bit more finicky as opposed to the bait fish that seemed a little bit more calmer and that will be a good sign and a good indicator that there are predator fish nearby and that will wrap up this video if you have any questions or comments please feel free to drop them down below and also if you are interested in the insider club be sure to check that out at saltstrong.com